Hey everybody, Dan Wolfman, CatShootsu.com. I'm just back from the range doing revolver training range day, training day, like Denzel, except I used three 357 Magnum revolvers, so they're a little dirty actually, guys. Uh, but since I got them, I thought I would do Ruger GP100, 3 inch, versus Taurus 692, 3 inch. Stainless steel, stainless steel, though a, a different kind of brushed finish. Uh, matte stainless they call it and uh, anyway guys this revolver is a special edition so it is quite a bit more expensive uh, and it's not exactly stock anymore but I have a lot of revolver content on my channel that started with the unboxing of this Ruger Taylor edition 3 inch 7 shot 357 Magnum and then my video got very popular is a three inch seven shot 357 Magnum, a viable CCW option. And I talked about this, the 686 plus, which I don't have yet. And the Taurus 692 saying I wanted to get the Taurus 692 and boy, I'm glad I, I did. So let me compare these a little bit and you know, just kind of talk about it. This is really a special edition. It's a six shot, it's seven shot. It's at a most a two and a half inch barrel. It's a three inch barrel with a fiber optic front. Um, if you can see that, uh, it comes with these Ruger marked Ultima grips. Um, so really, I didn't know how much I would like them. I love them. They feel great. So great that I got Ultima to send me those out. If you look at my original unboxing, like 175,000 views at the making of this video, it comes with the rubber grips, but I thought that these would fit and they just needed a little bit of like, Loctite put down in there and finagling to get it on and it's been great had no problems I've shot it quite a few times and full power 357 9 millimeter a bit of 38s today um, This is a seven shot as well Both have the unfluted cylinders, which uh, I like myself. I prefer that looks different I think it makes it a little more rare of a revolver for resale value Yankee Marshall likes it as well um, Size-wise, GP100 is just a bit bigger and a bit heavier than the Tour 692. The Tour 692 fits, um, is tight in the K-frame revolver, a little loose than my GP100 holster, I mean. Um, so really, it seems to be L-frame, 686 plus size. It's kind of started as a K-frame from what I can find online. No one knows the real size until me, and it seems like it got buffed up over uh, time. Empty firearm. Now... What big difference is this is in 357 38 special, but also comes with the nine millimeter cylinder. I don't have it out right now, but you just hit that button over there and you can take that off. So, pre COVID, you could get your cheap training in with nine millimeter. I much prefer the price of nine millimeter to 38 and the heavier recoil, though not in this. But heavier pressure, I should say, of 9mm versus training with 38s and then carrying with 357. So that is a huge advantage to the Taurus 692 multi caliber. Now, the GP100 can handle nuclear loads. So if you're going to be shooting a bunch of underwood, buffalo bore, things of that nature, GP100, yes, is stronger than a Smith & Wesson 686 Plus. Oh, do I get hit, hate for my video? Three reasons why a GP100 is stronger than a 686. But I'm correct. I've done my research. And I give three reasons that isn't about cast versus forged. And even the people that say that, boy, one's come a long way since their data from 40 years ago. Okay. Uh, push button release is a little different. I don't really, it seems I automatically do either. I just got back from the range. Seems I just automatically do either, so it's not a difference. I'd say probably better design is maybe the push button design on the Ruger compared to the Smith style on the Taurus where you uh, push it forward. Nice checkering. I really paid attention how nice that checkering is there. Nice checkering on the uh, hammer on the Taurus. Nice hammer, nice triggers. Actually, the checkering on the Taurus maybe looks a little bit better. A little more even than on the Ruger. That's interesting. It's kind of a little off-centered, a little wavy on the Ruger. Also, my rear sight is always just, I'm, I'm kind of 
OCD, it's canted a little bit. Um, though this might have been something Ruger had on, on stock. Um, this trigger has been worked on a little bit. So, what do I think of the Taurus 692? Uh, this has porting, big difference. This has an orange sticker in there, but I have had no problems with that. This has a flat black rear sight. This has a little bit like the Glock bucket, white outline, adjustable rear sight, both adjustable rear sights with the fiber optic front because it's a special edition. So if you want an heirloom to hand down to your great, 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 great grandkids, a Ruger GP100 is basically like the Glock of the revolver world as far as reliability and lasting forever and ever and not having issues. Now, when you first get one, there can be metal burrs in there and stuff, so it actually is good to have a qualified guy take a look and clean it out, which I had somebody uh, do and then kind of sanded things down, worked on the trigger a little bit, someone that was really knowledgeable, not a newbie, and uh, put in a um, M Carbo trigger kit in it. It's got shims and a trigger spring. Um, so this is a really, really clean double action. I like that you can stack. It's clean all the way through and it's getting better. Uh, single action is better than the Taurus. I like the double action on the Ruger. Um, probably better than the Smith, current Smith. Anyway, uh, not hating on Smith and Wesson, just kind of saying it how it is. The Taurus has a great double action for the price range. And for a defensive pistol, this it's got a very strong trigger return spring, which I think I like. I think I'm less likely to short stroke it. I had some short stroking today, but some of that I think was left hand weak side only. So I need to review the uh, tape. I remember short stroking twice today with three different revolvers. I think one of them might have been with a torso, but I think that that was left handed because this is this is the New York reload. Um, 35 ounces versus 38. Typical GP100, I believe it's 36. The wood grips add some weight to it. The wood grips add some weight to this as well. Um, probably the sight difference on this is a little bit of weight compared to a standard. As I was saying, if you want something to hand down, generation, 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 lasts forever. If you're a hand loader, going to shoot nuclear loads, buffalo bore, underwood, lots and lots of that stuff. You know, your big game hunting. The GP100 is going to take it a bit in that regard. As far as money, obviously, for the value, I think the Tour 692 is a great choice, even now at COVID prices, but definitely pre-COVID prices, um, this thing was, was really a steal. Um, it has the porting as well. I didn't think I would like it. I got no problem with it, and I don't think carrying ported pistol, like you, only you dudes who carry a ported gun, people that really haven't trained with it, especially your defensive ammo is low flash powder, and a little flash never hurt anybody really, it doesn't really affect your night vision that much, I mean, unless you're running night vision, I doubt you're running a revolver if you are, um, but definitely does recoil reduction, quite a bit, probably 20 to 35 percent, probably almost 35 percent, seems to work better, you see more coming out with the hotter loads, um, so, that may be an advantage to you, especially if you're a newer shooter. Uh, Taurus value, especially since it can shoot 9mm. Uh, making this during, you know, COVID times. But usually, a 9mm is a lot cheaper even than 38. And it's better to train with 9mm than train with 38 if you're going to carry with 357. Because of the higher pressure. And yes, it's a stronger, more powerful. Had an idiot online debating me. N by any metric whatsoever, velocity... <laughs> anything pressure uh nine millimeters way more powerful and way more effective than 38 um so i don't know what else to say other than i love the way they both look especially if you put the ultima this is like the judge the tracker frame or judge grip took a little finagling like i said but boy do you get a great looking piece for a great amount of money um the double action you can stack Pretty good on the Taurus. Toward, towards camera, it's a little harder, so let me pseudo aim them down. I like that I can stack for 15 yard, 25 yard shots. Uh, single action is not as good on the Taurus as on either a Smith or the or the Ruger, uh, but I don't, you know, I don't uh, shoot a lot of single action. 
I did some single action today at the very end of my video. So I have an upcoming video either before this or after this. Uh, range day with the three revolvers, Rock Island 2-inch 357 that uh, Yankee Marshall's been going crazy about. And um, anyway, guys, I think the Taurus is a great value. I think a Ruger GP100, even a stock one's a great value. If you were going to get a GP100, I would say spend the extra money, though, and then this really puts us way outside of the price range of this. I would get a special edition like this. I would get a 7-shot, not a 6-shot. I would get a three inch, not a two and a half inch for better ballistics. Look at my other videos. Um, or I would get a match champion 357 or a match champion in 10 millimeter. If I was going six shots, I would probably get the 10 millimeter. Um, I would get one that's a little bit different than the standard 4.2 inch six shot with the big rubber grips. That's what everyone has. So the resale, of, resale value it, um, isn't going to be as great as something like a harder to find barrel length caliber um, special edition like this with a fiber optic front or uh, a match champion with a you know different better grip and the fiber optic front. Um, this particular one I think is item 1782. So kind of as an investment, like they, they don't really hold the, the value like Smiths do for whatever reason. Um, but I, you know if you want just something that lasts and lasts and can beat up. Get a standard GP100. If you want to get something with a little more resale value, I would spend the money and get a, um, a different variation, if you will. If you're just going to get in a revolver, guys, if you're a 9mm Glock guy, and you're like, man, I, but revolvers are cool, I want to cosplay, I want to be a cowboy, I want to say when, really nothing beats the 692. It is held up great. I swap calibers. Look at my video, even at 15 yards, headshots, 9mm, I got the 357, like 135 grain, 125 grain, 9mm, 124, 115, or only this much difference, height difference at 15 yards. So I can make headshots. So I can train with a 9mm, it's not that big of a difference, even at in closer range, 5, 7 yards, no big deal. You can train with a 9mm, you don't even got to mess with the sights. A lot of people had questions about that. It's very accurate with the 9mm. People have questions about that. Um, so, like, if you always wanted a revolver, but you didn't want to spend a ton of money, or you didn't want to, like, always buy expensive 357 Magnum right now, it's crazy. Um, Tour 692 is really the way to go. Um, also, it's a great way to go just as a trainer. If you have a 7-shot GP100 or you have a 7-shot 686 Plus, uh, usually, because then the 9 is so much cheaper than 357. And like I said, a lot of people train with 38 because it's a little bit cheaper than 357, and they carry with full bore 357. That's not so wise. Training with 9mm and then switching to 357, especially with the porter barrel, isn't that much of a difference. If you don't like porting, occasionally they'll run, this comes in 6.5 inch and 3 inch usually. They've run at least twice from what I can figure out. Uh, a short run, a 2.5 inch barrel. Now it does look really beautiful. Uh, but I prefer 3 inch for ballistics. And if you got basically the weight anyway, I prefer 3 inch sight radius. Um, all that. Though it looks really good in two and a half inch. It really does. And uh, I think it is an ounce less. Or maybe two ounces less. So uh, anyway, guys, both are great revolvers. I think you're good to go either way. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out my CCW revolver highlights. Shooting all kinds of revolvers fast, multiple targets, dual wielding, all kinds of stuff. Check out my reviews and is a three inch seven shot 357 magnum a viable option then you might want to consider this i talk about it in that video the tour 692 unboxing full review i really show what it's capable of um and look at my new one with a revolver training day three 357 magnums or something like that i'll call it and anyway guys hope you enjoyed it thumbs up share subscribe hit that notification bell we're already 20,000 su subs now i want to get a 30,000 it should start skyrocketing let's get it up there and obviously guys martial arts jiu-jitsu combatives combatives and street jiu-jitsu all on my channel catch wrestling look at my combatives and street jiu-jitsu dvd on bjj fanatics and i'll catch you on the flip side thanks everybody